Um. Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some more Super Mario Odyssey while permanently crouching. Last time, we finished up Lake Lamode, almost. We haven't done the secret path, but we've done everything else here, and we'll be doing the secret path shortly. So, this kingdom is going to be completely possible to complete. No problems. Uh, we're just going to throw Cappy onto the Odyssey here, and make our way on to Steam Gardens. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, last time we were here, we didn't do the story. Well, we didn't, we didn't do all the story. We stopped short of the last story moon. Uh, the reason for that is not that the last story moon is impossible. The reason is that the last story moon is based around a boss that you fight using a capture. And so I thought it would be a bit too easy in this challenge. Um, so we're going to do it right now and just get the story over with so that we can do the rest of the Wooded Kingdom in the normal way. Uh, here's... Mario in his little space outfit. So yeah, defend the secret flower field. Uh, you have to use an uproot to fight the boss. Uh, I believe, I believe it's mandatory. Uh, so we're gonna head over there. First though, we're just gonna head over here because there's a couple of things I want to check out. Uh, yep, there's some purple coins here. I believe the hint art for this kingdom, it's on one of these trees, uh, is already here, even though we haven't done the story. Uh, yes, there it is. So we're going to look at that, just so we can activate it. Uh, boop. As you might guess from the way it looks, the Hintard is pointing back to Tostarina. Uh, we are not going to go back and do it right now. Uh, we'll have some other reasons to go back to Tostarina later, and we're going to do it then. But, yeah, um, we're going to go back to Tostarina and do that when we get around to it. Uh, here we basically didn't get any purple coins, actually, by the looks of things. Let me see. Yeah, we didn't actually get any purple coins. That's kind of weird. Um, we do need to buy an outfit in this kingdom using the purple coins in order to get some of the moons. So it's kind of weird that I didn't grab any of them. I was trying to do a, li a low purple coins run for this one spot. Since the purple coins are like hidden and never in your path, it's not like they're very well hidden, but it's not like they're hard to come to avoid, but I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, this, this um, bunny was a problem. I forgot about this. Um, yeah, this is one of the first moons I tried to get here, and I basically decided to do so something else because it was annoying me. Uh, let's see if one of these rocket flowers can help us. So Yeah, it makes us much, much faster until we crash into something, which we're going to do very quickly because it's very hard to steer. So yeah, um, what we want to do is try to hit this, this bunny here with Cappy, uh, which will stun them and slow them down so that we can do that. There we go. There we go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah, so that bunny moon is pretty easy. Much easier, of course, if you're allowed to walk, which we're not. Um, we're just going to warp our way up to do the boss, I think. And that will give us a multi-moon, and it's pretty easy. Um, I might skip getting a life up heart, just because it's pretty easy. Yeah, let's head straight in. Um, there is something interesting I can show us before we start fighting. Uh, here's the boss. It's a flower stealing UFO thing. Uh, if you get your positioning just right, I think you need to triple jump maybe? Yeah, I think a triple jump is needed. Uh, or maybe we can capture an uproot and do it that way. Let's have a look. If you can get on top of the boss, yeah, okay, an uproot is the easiest way to do it. Uh, you can throw your cap during this little bit here at that um, pillar in the middle there, which lights it up. And if you leave Cappy there long enough, you can see a heart pops out. Which is interesting because throwing Cappy doesn't make her do the fast spin thing where she says her name and a thing pops out. So there's no indication that that would happen. Which I find interesting. Uh, anyway, we need an uproot because this is an uproot based boss battle. Uh, basically, you just have to hit that spot with the uproot and then the boss will start fighting for real. And it's just a flower stealing UFO thing. Shaped like a flower. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, and yeah, it flips over, so its weak point is now on the top, so we can't hit it. 
Um, but these other little floating flowers out here are also weak points. So what we got to do is just break all these little flowers using the uproot. It's pretty easy. And that'll flip back over so we can do more damage. I believe we have to do that three times and it will get a little bit trickier, but not a lot trickier. Uh, this is the difficult-ish part of the boss battle. You have to dodge these uh, waves of laser. But uproots are bad at that sort of thing because you can't actually jump with one. You just gotta extend the root and then bounce off of it, basically. Whereas if it were Mario, you could just do it like a backflip or something, and it'd be quite easy. Uh, with the uproot, you need a lot more, like, you need to do it ahead of time a lot faster, basically. Oops. Oh wow, it actually hit its eyes. I didn't know you could do that. You take damage if you do that, so don't do that. Uh, yeah, you don't want to get hit by the laser because it will... It will do damage, if you can see. There we go. Uh, there is a way to get more health here. I believe hitting those blocks on the side there give you health, so I'm going to hit one of those. No, not that one. The middle one? Yeah, the middle one. Yeah, these are fairly easy to dodge. Um, there is a harder version of this boss too, but... It's not that much harder, honestly. It's one of the easier bosses to have a harder version. <laughs> I forget what it changes, actually. I think it adds just some more obstacles to the ground that you have to avoid. Oh no, it adds, um, those, um... You know those things that you can hit with your hat and they send out a shockwave? Those things. It adds a bunch of those. Um, and they can be activated by the other shockwaves, which means there's a lot more dodging to do. Uh, it's not super hard though. And as you can see, this, this version is really, really easy. I grabbed a heart, but I didn't even need it. I didn't take damage again, so easy peasy. So yeah, easy peasy. Um, this is a really, really short video at this point, so I'm going to grab a few more moons. Um, I might actually do the hint art just so it reloads this area and shows up the post um, story stuff like I did with Lake Lamode. Uh, let me see. As you can see, it's now daytime in this kingdom and it looks much nicer. And all of the robots are happy because we've saved the kingdom. Uh, I think we can go talk to Jam and Toad. We might go do that next. Uh, there is a Jam and Toad in this kingdom. There wasn't one in Lake Lamode. He's only in a f um, sorry, they're only in a few kingdoms. They're not in most kingdoms, basically. Uh, so yeah, to get up here, you just gotta do that. Uh, Jam and Toad's not here yet. They would be on, I believe, this ledge? Basically where I'm standing now. So I think we might need to reload the area to make them show up. Uh, no biggie, but we'll do that later. Um, yeah, there's 100 purple coins here. This area is much, much larger than Lake Lamode, despite being the alternate choice on the same split path. It's a little strange that way. Uh, and if you look at the moon count, there are a lot more moons here too, so this is going to take a lot more videos. Uh, I reckon I'm going to probably get to about 10 moons here and then call it a video, maybe. We'll see how long that takes. Uh, there was poison here before, but that robot's gotten rid of it, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. There's still some uproots here because you're supposed to use an uproot to get through the maze. Uh, you can get through most of the maze without an uproot, and I'm going to demonstrate that. If, I don't know if we need to go through there just yet, actually. Maybe. Um, so yeah, the entrance to the maze over here is the one you're supposed to go in, and you're meant to use an uproot to do it. Uh, there will be a moon up there, but it's not loaded yet. I think it might be one of the um, moon rock moons. So yeah, you don't have to go into this maze at all, as I showed in my earlier video. You can just jump over here. Do a really easy cap bounce to get over here. Uh, there is some stuff that's been activated now, such as this uh, timer. So I'm going to hit this timer. This challenge won't be much different while we're crouching. We just got to get onto this first pole and we should be good. And yeah, it's just swinging on these little poles a little bit. Yeah, it's not hard. Uh, easy peasy. 
So yeah, that's five moons. Uh, we're gonna get a few more, I reckon. I don't know how many more. Uh, we already did quite a few of the sub moons around this area. Sub, sub moons, minor moons around this area already. Um, because I wasn't too interested in doing the main moons in this bit. Uh, but yeah, this this maze here, you can just enter it from the back using wall jumps like this. I don't think you need to throw Cappy either. I'm just hoping I'm speeding things up a bit by doing that. Uh, those are purple coins you can get just by doing some cap bounces and stuff. There we go. You can also just use an uproot, which is easier, but this is this has more finesse and it looks cool. So I'm going to do that. There's another uproot in here in case you lost your previous one, I guess. But I mean, you can get out of here without using an uproot, so I'm not really sure why they thought you would might you might actually absolutely need another one in here. You can warp anyway, so it's not like you can stop lock, but I don't know. Uh, so we're gonna just jump up here. There is there are some moon shards in here later, but they haven't been added to the area yet. They show up later on. Uh, I believe we didn't get this moon. Basically, you break that, yeah. And there's a moon inside. There's a bunch of um nuts you can break like that one. Yeah. <laughs> Time my yeah wrong. <laughs> ba -da -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Yeah, that's how you meant to do it. I uh, yeah too early. <laughs> too much enthusiasm. Uh, yeah, and you can come back this way. You can't actually exit the maze on this side because that door is closed. Which I think is an interesting quirk. Oddly enough, there isn't anything to get up here. Even though it's pretty hard to get up here, you have to go through the maze backwards. Um, so that's a bit strange. Uh, I'm just gonna warp over to Forest Charging Station and have a look around over there. There is a painting you can get to just around here somewhere. So I'm gonna see if we can reach that painting. Uh, oh, there's also this moon over here. Um, we didn't do this earlier. Basically, yeah, there's a bunch of Goombas. You can capture them, and then you can make a Goomba Tower so that Goomba can see you and fall in love. Just like all the other Goomba moons, really. There we go. Uh, not a fan of the motion controls for high jumping. Uh, I think that might be enough. Uh, no, one more. We need one more. So yeah, you just you just walk up to Goombat when you're tall enough for her to see you, and she falls in love and gives you a moon. Hi Goombat. There we go. Ba -da -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Yeah, easy peasy. Uh, this little hole down here, you can see. You want you do want to roll into this hole because. There's a bunch of purple coins in there. Um, no moon, just a bunch of purple coins. Um, I forget if we did this already. Let's go have a look. Uh, so on the side over here, you can jump your way up here on these little ledges. I don't remember if I already did this. <laughs> uh, since I was here a long time ago. Uh, okay, yeah, I haven't been up here yet. I've always sort of gotten those purple coins. It'd be kind of hard to get around there without getting them. I wonder if a zero purple coin run is tricky. Um, oh no, there's another way to do this bit, actually, which is much easier. So yeah, swinging on these vines here, it's pretty easy. Uh, the part without any vines, because we're going to be crouching, it's a little tricky, but we can do it just like that. Yeah, there is another way to get here. You can actually just drop down from above, rather than go through all that swinging. And there's another moon there. Ba -da -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Yeah! And going through this pipe just takes you back to where we started. Over here. Um, we're going to do a backflip so we can just get all of these. There we go. Um, if we actually go over to the forest charging station itself, there should be a bit more stuff we can do. Uh, I believe there's another timer challenge here, although it might not be available yet. There's also that rocket there, which we haven't been through. Uh, okay, there's the timer challenge. Uh, this one is... I we already did it, actually. Let's have a look. No, haven't done it yet. Uh, this one is kind of tricky. Uh, there's a bunch of moving platforms, as you can see, and you've got to make your way up there pretty quickly. And you can't have a cappy because it's a timer challenge. This one might prove to be a bit hard. We might need to pull some tricks with positioning Cappy and then and then going, uh, like I did in a couple of other places. Oops. Well, we're going down here. 
More purple coins to get those. Uh, I'm going to try to get all the purple coins. I should be able to. Some of them might be in a 2D section, but as we now know, 2D sections are not a problem. <laughs> I mean, they're a bit of a problem, but they're not insurmountable problem. More purple coins here. Yeah, so purple coins generally out of the way. So typically you can get through a kingdom and get all the moons without actually getting any of them. Uh, the exception being if you need a few of them to buy the costume you need to do the kingdom. Which in this case you actually do. There is a moon that requires you to wear a certain costume that you get with purple coins here. So, yes. <laughs> there might be an alternate costume you can use. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, let's warp our way back up to the forest charging station and give that timer challenge another shot. I'm guessing it's going to be kind of a thing, uh, because you have to do it quite quickly, and there's moving platforms, and etc, etc. It's, 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 not, it's not trivial. Um, so we're going to start over here. Uh, let me see here. Get Cappy nice and close to the. Okay, let's just let's just throw her onto the thing and go from there. Okay, so yeah, the moon isn't that hard to reach, theoretically, but uh, in practice, it may be it may be quite a thing. Let's try to get Cappy back. Um, again, when we don't have her, our move set is dramatically restricted compared to normal play. Uh, so we can just flip our way up onto this... Oops. Oh my goodness. Let's bop that just to get, the, get her back. There we go. Okay, so I reckon we want to just backflip up the second bit uh, to get onto there. And we want to waddle our way over here. Ooh, that's that's tricky. Uh, you can backflip onto this one, but making that jump, I think I need a long jump, and we're probably going to bonk. Hmm. Thankfully, the first platform there is completely skippable, which makes this a bit easier. Uh, hang on. Let's have a look here. Can we... I think we might be able to backflip all the way up to that one, which would save a lot of time. Let's see. Yeah, I think that might be doable. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, there. So, now, if we get back up nice and quick... Oh my goodness, that's proving tricky. Uh, Alright, let's... Come back over here to begin with. Okay, we're now starting here, which should be a bit help, a bit more time to work with. We just do a long jump to get over there. And we, oh my goodness. And um, yeah, we'll just wait for the platform to come back and then do a roll, I reckon. And that should be, that should be fine. Should theoretically be okay. Dang it. So yeah, once you've got it on there, it's very hard to get it back off because of the limited jumps we have and the fact that you have to jump on the Scarecrow in order to be able to deactivate. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Alright, so... Backflip up here. Backflip up here. Then do a roll. Long jump. Ugh. Bonk. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, okay, we get Cappy back. Flip. Oh my goodness, uh... No, 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 no! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, I'm just gonna... You can actually warp while it's going on, which is interesting, because you don't actually have Cappy. You wouldn't think that would work. Um, because she provides the warping, and when you actually... You know, if you're in an area where you go... If she's been stolen or something, for example, like in the Lost Kingdom, you actually can't cap warp in that situation. 
but you can catwalk if you just left her on a scarecrow, apparently. Oh, I remember this sub area. Uh, here there's a lot of fogs, so you can't really see what you're doing, basically. And there's a bunch of moon shards. I believe you have to capture a Paragoomba in order to get everything here. It's a little frustrating, but not a problem. So yeah, five moon shards. There's actually a second moon as well. I don't think either of them will be too much of a challenge. I think it's here. So yeah, down here there's this nut that you can break. Uh, you can grow ground pounds or you can throw your hat at it, either way. Ba -da -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Yeah! And you just have to capture another power game to get back up because there's not like a pipe or anything. I think I could have gotten down there without the power Goomba, but getting up, no way. Uh, let me see if I can remember where the other moons are. So yeah, we got one moon, we got three moon shards. I think you just fly over here, yeah. And then I think just following the coins basically does the trick for the most part. So if you wanted to do a coinless version of this, it would be a bit harder, but not that much harder. Okay, there's the other moon shard. So yeah, you definitely need a Paragoomba to get some of those. Or maybe you could do it and then fall to your death afterwards, given it's underneath the platform. Because the moon star shards, I believe, stay collected. So that would be an option. Ba -da -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Yeah! Okay, uh, so that's that sub area done. It's a pretty easy one. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Um, that's accessible basically as soon as you reach this area, so it makes sense that it's not too hard. I think it's accessible that early. I really remember. Um, I'm gonna walk over to Secret Flower Field entrance here and have a look around. I think there's some more moons over here that we can still do. There's definitely a 2D section that we can do, and this video is still a little shorter than some of the others, so I want to do a bit more. Uh, the tanks over here are now gone, but there's this guy, uh, who you can use for some of the same things. Uh, as you can see, it's a invisible fellow. There we are, you capture him, and basically you can spit your coins at stuff instead. Uh, but that does actually use up your coins to do that, which is kind of interesting. Whereas with the tanks, you just have unlimited ammo. I was trying to do a home, like a spinning throw as so I got all of those, but no. Uh, what you're supposed to do over here, you're meant to grab this seed and then go talk to the, and then go press that button over there, which activates a short timer challenge. Uh, because holding the seed stops you from crouching, this timer challenge will be exactly the same way it normally is. So I'm not too worried. Um, basically, you just have to ride these platforms to get up to the top. It's pretty easy. I thought I messed it up there, but I didn't, even though I said it's pretty easy, which usually means messing things up. Uh, so this is the observation deck. Yep, uh, there's a place to plant the seed up here, which gets you into a sub-area. We can go do. Which we'll be doing now, because why not? I forget exactly what you do in this one, uh, I do know there's a lot of coins to be had. Uh, I think you might do a lot of spinning with the... Oh no, hang on. No, it's um... Okay, it's based on these guys. Uh, can you do it without one? I could probably gain enough height to do that. Oop. Oh no! <laughs> oh my god. You don't die if you fall down here. You just have to redo the not collecting sequence. Which is kind of more annoying in some ways. Um... I'm just gonna try to get these purples here. It would be easy to just go grab gl glide on and do it that way. Yeah, you need glide on anyway over here uh, because if you look closely, you can see Captain Toad is down there. Oop, I missed one. Oh well, we'll be back up there in a second. No problem. So yeah, to get to Captain Toad, you just glide your way over, and you can talk to him for another moon. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yes, thank you, Captain Toad. Ba -da -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Yeah! And as usual, Captain Toad is stuck somewhere that he can't get away from. He can't jump, so he won't be able to reach this pipe. Um, the previous pipe was, of course, inaccessible. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, so basically, we have to do that little nut mini game again in order to get back up there. All of the cloud areas are like that because they have so many coins. 
Uh, and I'm just gonna do it the intended way with the with the um with the upward, just because it's gonna be a lot simpler. Um, there's a whole bunch of coins piled up in that area, so you really want to have something like an uproot that can grab a whole pile of vertical coins at once. Uh, and someone's playing Stardew Valley. <laughs> Good question. Uh, let me just grab some more coins here. But da -da. So yeah, I said that was easy. So now I'm going to be messing it up, because that's how it works when you record a video game for the internet. But yeah, this is completely unaffected, because while you're holding a nut, you can't crouch. Seed? I think these are seeds. The nuts are the ones you can break open to get the moons out, and you can't break these open for the same effect. So yeah, different things. Ascend. The reason I'm going right to the top like this is if I don't go right to the top, holding crouch will make me slide down as I'm holding it, which is a problem. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're just going to use the uproot here because if you look at the way the coins are positioned, you, you are best off using something like an uproot that can grab a whole bunch of coins at once vertically. Uh, like this. So he just grabs them all, which is significantly superior to trying to grab them all as just Mario. And we, d we are a bit low on coins after some of the challenge areas in Lake Lamo because they were very hard. <laughs> uh, just walk around here, just scoop up everything we can. So yeah, these, these cloud areas, there's a couple in the game that just work like this. Ba -da -ba. Yeah, there's a couple of moons, but also lots and lots of coins to get. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! So yeah, the two moons here are very easy. Uh, plus, you get a whole lot of coins there as well. Um, these areas were the most efficient way to get coins in the game. They aren't anymore because of the Balloon World update. Balloon World is much faster. But if you're not playing online, that's the fastest way. Because Balloon World is, you know, a multiplayer mode of sorts. And requires online. Um, okay, let's go to that 2D section now. Uh, it's one that's hard to get into, which is why I thought we couldn't do it earlier because of the good old pipe problem that we've had throughout the run. Uh, but it's completely doable. And once we're in there, actually getting the moon should be pretty easy, so... Uh, actually, I can't remember if there's a moon in there already or if it won't be there till later. Let's have a look. Okay, so yeah, the timing for this is, as I've mentioned, really tricky. Yeah, because I'm holding the crouch button, I'm going to exit the pipe as soon as I enter. But if I can jump at the right time, which I'm having trouble with, because it's really, really tight, I can get into the area, which is hard. Ugh. I might just do some pause buffering here. Ugh. I'm not sure you can pause buffer it, actually. One, two, three, four, five. <sighs> okay, that was easier. I don't know if that's because I rolled into the pipe instead, or just because it was easier, but it was easier. So yeah, we can get into a 2D section like this. As you can see, uh, this 2D section has some really nice music. Which is good because we have no other way of hearing it besides going to this one spot. And there's a couple of Goombas, and we're wearing a pretty cool outfit. We took damage in a really dumb way, uh, but not a problem. So yeah, basically the moon is up there. Uh, we can't build up a whole lot of speed, so we may have some trouble here. Um, okay, we can make that jump, so I think it is doable. We ran into that pipe by accident, you have to actually hold up to enter a vertical pipe like that, fortunately. Uh, okay, this is going to be a thing. Um, 
So yeah, basically the problem is we can't run on the ground, so we can't build up much speed, if any. And you have to jump from this ledge when it's quite high up to actually get high enough to reach that moon. <sighs> I think holding Y doesn't do anything, so I'm not going to bother. Just to make it a bit easier. Uh, this, this is doable, it's just hard. Uh, like a lot of things in this run. <laughs> uh, if I could turn around, that would actually help a lot, but I don't know of an easy way to do that. Oh, hang on, maybe if I walk off this ledge? So if you slide off a ledge, you turn into a normal jump. I think lets you turn around. Maybe not, though. I have turned around in one of these before, but I'm not sure how I did it. There we go. Okay, so now we're facing the other way. Let's see if that makes it a bit easier. I think it might, because we can build up a bit more speed when we're moving that direction. Which I think will make things a bit easier for us. I don't know if we can make this jump now, though, which might be a bit of a problem. Okay, you can build up a bit of momentum just by crouch hopping a lot, which is fortunate because that's about all we can do. Uh, okay, um... I think it's going to be easier facing this way, but it's still not easy, easy. <laughs> See, that first jump is pretty straightforward now. Um, because of the way mo momentum works in 2D sections. There we go. Okay, so now this part I think should not be too hard with our new momentum tricks. Oh, maybe, maybe not. And the rubber band came undone, so I'm just going to immediately pause and fix that because I don't want to cheat. There we go. There we go. Okay, we didn't actually change direction and we just lost some height, so I think that's fine. The, the rubber band came undone for a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, um, when you're going forward, you can build up a little bit of momentum because of that slide that you get. But when you're going backwards, you pretty much just have to jump immediately to get any momentum. Uh, which is much harder. Oh, uh, come on. It's got to be doable, right? It's got to be doable. Come on. I know that this one is also, is impossible in a jumpless run, uh, because the cappy hover doesn't give you quite as much height as a regular jump. It might be impossible in this run too. We'll see how we go. But I get the feeling I'm just not doing it well enough. Because we can jump the same as a normal height, so we should be able to... And we can slide forward to get that little extra bit of momentum, so I think we should be able to get enough to do what we want to do. It's just really hard, is all. Once I get this moon, that's the video, I think. <laughs> I refuse to believe it's impossible. So 
that's quite far off from getting it. So, hmm. Nope. So it's not a lot not a lot of room to build up that momentum that we need. Ah, oh, so close. I think it's doable. I think it's doable. Not if we do that though. You can see we can get a lot more momentum than you think would be possible if we k keep jumping around like we're doing. Um, yeah, basically when you're trying to go backwards, your momentum cancels out really, really fast, but if you're going forward, it doesn't. Unfortunately, turning around is really hard because of the way... <laughs> because of the fact that we're crouching and it doesn't turn you around, so... Yeah, and you need some momentum to do that, so we have to keep popping around you know, to build up that momentum. So yeah, I think I think when you're pushing back, when you touch the ground, you basically just stop. But if you're pushing back, ugh, pushing forward when you touch the ground, you slide, and the sliding can maintain your momentum. And therefore let you build up a lot by jumping around. I believe it's doable, it's just, just really hard. <laughs> oh my goodness. As usual, the 2D moons are very, very hard in this run. Maybe I need to do little tiny hops so that I can build up enough momentum. I don't know if that was actually closer or not. It looked a bit closer, but it's hard to tell. Charles is getting sick of that jump noise. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, um, definitely you have to face this way for this to work, which is good because I am facing this way. Okay, there we go. <sighs> kind of wish I had safe states just to simplify that bit. So I can get back here, up here quickly. Instead of having to redo that whole first bit. Okay. Mm, damn it. It's taking so freaking long. But yeah, as you can see, moving to the, moving forward with this little skid gives you a lot more height and distance. Maybe not height, but it gives you a lot more distance than jumping backwards does. So... Which is why this second jump is significantly harder than the first now that I'm facing the other way. Yeah, when you hit the ground there, that cancels, that like, you completely stop on the ground, so you lose the fact that you were jumping the previous jump, which means you can't get enough height to make it through. Oh my goodness. Alright. 
Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Uh, let's try when it gets to that little notch there. Nope. I wonder if the fact that... I wonder if... Hang on, I'm gonna experiment a little bit with two-player mode. Uh, the way two-player mode works is player two controls Cappy. And in normal play, Cappy is hilariously overpowered. Uh, if I just power up this extra Joy-Con. There we go. Uh, what Cappy can do in a 2D area is this. You have a little bit of a hover. So I'm wondering if I combine the regular jump with this little hover ability, if I can get enough momentum and... Oh, oops, hang on. Hang on, I'm not crouching. Let's go back to the bottom. So apparently when you do... When you switch to two-player mode, it also resets the controls you're pressing. Alright. Kind of weird. Uh, yeah, I'm facing the correct way already. Okay, so let's try this one more time. So we now have Cappy's hover to help us out. I have to press the second button on a different controller to actually use it, so... See? Uh... Oop. But I think that should be able... Actually, that lets us change direction, too. That's actually a really powerful ability for this, this run. Okay, um... Interesting. Okay. Anyway, let's get back up here. Um, I'm going to try to avoid using the Cappy ability as much as possible, just... Even though it's allowed, two-player mode is completely allowed in this run. Uh, I just think it's a little bit... I'm just hoping it won't be necessary, basically, since... A lot of stuff, like, most stuff should be doable, theoretically, without it. Okay, so now we're up here. Uh, we're now facing the wrong way, so if we... We turn around. There we go. Okay, so my theory. Uh, hang on, if I jump and then do a cappy hover, yeah, you can do both of them at once. So let me see here. Okay, no, I timed that wrong. Uh, yeah, the timing on the cappy hover is very weird, uh, unfortunately. Which is one of the reasons it's going to be a bit hard to use. There we go. So yeah, we do a regular jump to get the height, and then we can hover. Yeah, that's totally doable with the cap with Cappy. Okay. Uh, I don't think that's doable in single player, just because I don't think you can get enough momentum to reach that while crouching. Ba -da -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Yeah. And that's the only moon so far we've had to use two-player mode. Um, I'm going to just leave two-player mode on for the moment, but not use it, just so that Mario stays crouching, um, while I do this next bit. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much us, that, that's pretty much us for that video. We've gotten 14 moons, supposedly, but one of that, one of them was the triple moon, so I don't know if that counts. Also, yeah, Cappy floats above Mario's head like this in two-player mode, it looks pretty weird. <laughs> Um, but you can still throw her normally, that hasn't changed. Uh, but we are going to go back into single player mode for the rest of the game. Uh, we will use two player mode if we need it, but hopefully we won't be needing it again. Uh, yeah, Mario uncrouches when you turn off two player mode as well, so let's just fix that. There we go. Okay, so that moon is done. I don't think that's possible without two player mode, without the hover that Cappy gives you. Um, I just don't think it's possible to get enough momentum for Mario to reach that. Uh, which is really sad, because so far we haven't needed to use two-player mode, or assist mode, or any of the other help of helping, helping hands that this game has to offer. Oh no, we used an amiibo. Never mind, okay. 
Um, but that was just to speed things up because I'm trying to record a video here. So that doesn't really count. Uh, anyway, um, 14 moons. I'm going to go cash them in uh, just so that we have a nice blank slate for the next video. Technically, that's more like 11 moons because... Hang on. 14. 12 moons, not, not 11. 12 moons because one of those was the multi-moon you get for fighting the boss. And that's not really multiple moons if you think about it. I mean, it... It's just one moon that counts as three. <laughs> so, yeah. And really, it's it's more like 11 moons because honestly, the boss was incredibly easy compared to most of the other stuff I've done. <laughs> okay, let's cash all that in. There we go. We may unlock a new costume. Nope. Okay, well, that's, that for this. that's us for this video. Uh, next time... We'll be trying to get some more moons here. There are a lot of moons to get here, so we may be a while. Uh, we'll still be doing A-side moons, so we won't open that moon rock for a while. Uh, we might go do the hint art so that we can reset bits of this area and load some of the stuff that shows up later on. Uh, but, but yeah, so we'll still be doing A-side moons in the next video, so tune in for more A-side moons in this game. Um, and thanks for watching. <laughs> uh...